Manchester, centuries-old city of international trade. Today, capital of the thriving Northwest, serving the needs of one of the world's greatest industrial areas. Population, within 10 miles of the city center, two and a half million. Four and a half million within 20 miles. Center of commerce, marketing, insurance, and banking. Manchester, the inland city, the third major seaport in the United Kingdom. An international seaport, prosperous and influential. Yet less than a century ago, Manchester was a sick and ailing city, crippled by the heavy import levies of its nearest seaport, Liverpool. How did this dramatic change of fortune occur? How were the ships of many nations brought to the very door of the city? Ships bearing cargoes from the remote corners of the world. The answer lies in the Manchester Ship Canal. 36 miles of man-made waterway, which from 1894 has linked Manchester with the oceans and markets of the world. The port of Manchester, merely an infant in the Victorian era, has emerged mature and confident into a fast-changing world. International trade is fundamental to any great community, and the port is handling an ever-increasing volume of goods. Rapid handling of cargoes is vital, for a swift turnaround of ships is essential to provide berths for incoming traffic. A tug arrives for duty with an outward bound merchantman. These sturdy craft are constant companions of vessels on the canal passage, and together with the pilot will act as guide and watchdog. Tow lines from the tugs are secured fore and aft. Powerful engines throb into life, and the heavy-laden vessel is eased from her berth into the main channel. The skilled judgment of pilot and helmsman swing the great vessel clear of her neighbors, and she slides gracefully through the waters of the dock basin, bows pointing west. For westward lies the sea and the first lock of her canal passage. There are five lock systems on the canal. The first to be negotiated is at mode wheel. Maneuvering through the locks is no mean feat, but it's all in a day's work to experienced lock personnel. Every lock is supervised by a harbour master who operates a closely controlled and efficient traffic system. of the lock now and for the next three miles the canal is flanked by what has become the world's greatest concentration of industry Trafford Park. Back in 1896 Trafford Park was a large country estate complete with manor house but following its purchase by private syndicate inspired no doubt by its proximity to the port of Manchester many diverse industries grew. Trafford Park is today a workshop for the world producing a wide variety of manufactured articles agricultural machinery, chemicals, foodstuffs, abrasives. 
light and heavy engineering. All are found here in this vast industrial community and the unrivaled facilities of the ship canal with its own railway system provide a perfect flow line for import of raw materials and export of the finished goods. To the west of Trafford Park stands Barton Power Station, a familiar landmark to the canal traveller. Barton is a study in contrast and its connection with shipping lies in the fact that here the Bridgewater Canal is carried over the ship canal by means of a swing aqueduct. The present structure replaced a stone aqueduct designed by James Brindley, brilliant engineer of the Bridgewater Canal. In fact, the official opening of his canal and aqueduct took place at this very spot in 1761. Water for the hydraulic power system which swings the aqueduct is drawn from the canal. And in the control tower, a telephone link keeps the engineers fully informed on the movements of all ships. It all looks so easy. Just a touch of a button, a glance at the pressure gauge, and with a turn of a valve, the huge steel trough swings smoothly to one side. But the engineers have a busy time at Barton. For in addition to the aqueduct, there's a road bridge to swing open. Suburban motorists have come to accept the priorities of canal traffic at this point and often enjoy the passing glimpse of the maritime traveller. There's still 32 miles of canal ahead, and the sea lies some 43 feet below our present water level. But before the next lock, there's a chance to admire the majestic lines of the ultra-modern viaduct which carries the M62 motorway. Naturally, there's no stopping on the motorway, and traffic flashes by quite oblivious of what lies below.